modern medicine. Welcome back to Bush Stadium. Close to 52,000 on hand for game one of this National League Championship Series. And baseball fans, grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. The Cardinals have taken the field. Bill Garner took over at the All-Star break for Jimmy Williams, his manager of the Astros. His lineup reads as follows. Greg Biggio in left field, the Red Hot Carlos Beltran in center, Jeff Bagwell at first. Lance Berkman in right, Jeff Kent at second, Morgan Ensberg at third, a ladder third of Jose Vizcaino, Brad Osmus, and Brandon Backey against Houston, Texas native, Gregory Scott Williams. They call him Woody. Well, look at the numbers for Williams on the regular season, 11 and 8 with a 418. Very odd year for him during the middle of the season. He went through a dead arm period and wanted to retire. Looked around and didn't see himself making a postseason roster, and then he really turned it up a notch. This is a scouting report, all about location for him. Has to hit his spots, keep the ball down, and he doesn't really look like it, but he's a bulldog out there. Maybe one of the most competitive guys you'll ever run into. Brett Vigio leads it off, takes ball one, down and in, and we are underway at Bush Stadium. Our broadcast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. Vigio fouls it out of play. It's a ball and a strike. Bob Brindley, if you're Tony La Russa, boy, it's nice to have a veteran who's been down this road before getting the ball in game one. Well, there's no doubt about it. You like to send a guy out there that's been through it before. Uh, the crowd's not going to bother him. The noise is not going to bother him. Us up here in the booth is not going to bother him. He's going to go out there and pitch his game. That misses away. Two balls and a strike. Vigio during the regular season, a 281 batter at 24 home runs, 63 runs batted in. He had seven leadoff home runs this year. Two and two. Now, Woody Williams is one of those pitchers that will kind of change his arsenal as the game goes on. He's got a sinking fastball, a cut fastball, a mix in an occasional curve. His best pitch by far is his changeup, but depending on what he's got working on a given night, uh, you may see a completely different Woody Williams in back-to-back -back starts. Biggio pops it up into foul ground, and that ball will drift out of play. Still two balls and two strikes. You know, Tom, not only Woody Williams on the mound, but Mike Matheny behind the plate, another guy that's caught a lot of postseason games for the Cardinals. We asked Tony LaRusso about him before the game, if he's the best defensive catcher he's ever had. And he hedged a little bit because he's had some real good ones, but he said Matheny is the most solid mechanical catcher behind the plate. Line into center field, a leadoff base hit by one of the killer bees on this Houston lineup, Greg Biggio. But Cardinals, a sensational defensive cub. We cover the field, brought to you by State Farm. Gold Glove winners in center, in right, at short, at third, and behind the plate. Well, the postseason baseball is about pitching and defense. Certainly the Cardinals have the uh, ladder of that formula. He came over from Kansas City, spent the first 69 games of the year with the Royals, and in 90 games with Houston, hit 258, 23 home runs, and 53 runs batted in. That pitch in the dirt blocked by Matheny. Beltron, 10 of 22 during the division series, four home runs, nine runs batted in. Guys, people may remember the old Craig Biggio, the guy in 1998 that stole 50 bases for this team. He only stole seven bases this year, but they've been much more aggressive with Phil Garner at the helm. He just told me the other day he doesn't steal nearly as much anymore because he just can't handle the wear and tear anymore. Always has been a head-first slider. He says it just kills my shoulders. He said, I'd rather hit doubles now. Well, not only that, with Beltran, Bagwell, Berkman, and Kent behind him in the order, you definitely don't want to run yourself out of an inning. Where are you going? Well, back out of play. Bill Garner managed, of course, in Milwaukee, later Detroit, was brought on board, took over for Jimmy Williams, the 48 and 26 mark, and they won 36 of their last 46 to reach the postseason, coming off the Astros' first ever postseason series win. Hammer down the right field line, and it is gone! Beltron! Four home runs in the division series and a laser 
to right field his first at bat of the championship series. It's 2-0 Astros. Watch location of where this pitch ends up, and this is the type of pitches that Beltran hit all day long during that divisional series. He hit a lot of pitches out over the middle of the plate that, quite frankly, are easy to hit. That's just a nothing fastball right down Broadway, and that's a beautiful swing. Now, the way he's locked in right now, he's, he's not a hitter you want to just throw a get-me-over pitch to, whether it be a breaking ball or a fastball. You better have an intent and a location with everything you throw him. Jeff Bagwell, first pitch swinging. And he's down a strike. Well, Beltran really, for the first time, is on the main stage. All those great years in Kansas City on losing ball clubs primarily until they had a pretty good run under Tony Pena last year. But he clearly loves the bright lights, the Monster Division Series, and a home run already in the opening inning tonight. And he's a free agent at the end of the year. <laughs> Well, there's just nothing on the field that he can't do well. Steals bases, plays a solid defensive outfield, hits for power, hits for average, sweeps up the stands, parks cars, whatever you need. <laughs> you know, when you think about it, guys, I mean, he probably would have been a 40-40 guy had he played all season in one league. He's the only guy in the history of baseball to drive in 50 runs in both leagues in a single season. Jeff Bagwell, a two-hopper, rolling back some, and throws it out. Well, certainly during this series, we'll be talking a great deal about the duo in particular, Biggio and Bagwell. They have waited so very long to not only win their first postseason series wearing Houston uniforms, and now they're trying to go one step further. And it's really good to see them both on this stage. I mean, they've, they've played the game so well throughout their career. Great teammates by all accounts uh, represent the game very, very well, not to mention uh, their physical abilities on the field. They spent their whole careers getting dirty, played hard. Lance Berkman. Hit 316 during the regular year, 30 home runs, 106 runs batted in for the switch hitting right fielder. During the regular season, the Astros went scoring first in a game, 67 and 25. Berkman fouls it out of play. Told you, Woody Williams, born and raised in Houston, Texas, grew up a big Astros fan. He has a lot of friends and family here tonight in from Houston. And he told him, you're not getting tickets from me if you can't change your allegiance for this series. Still two and two. He's another one of the many guys on the field for both clubs that didn't start off in the position that they're playing at the major leagues. He went to the University of Houston as a shortstop. Well, the best breaking ball we've seen from Woody Williams thus far. He hasn't shown very many, but he picked a real good time to throw one here to Lance Berkman. A 12-6 breaking ball. Very top of the strike zone there, according to Tim Wilkie, the home plate umpire. See, Berkman looked like he almost tried to duck under that one. Now Jeff Kent, a National League most valuable player in his days with the Giants. Hit 289 during the regular year with 27 home runs. Drove in 107 runs. First pitch swing, pops it up. Walmart waits and the inning is over. But Beltran gets the Astros on the board with a two-run home run. Series on Fox is brought to you by Arca X, the world's largest fully electronic stock exchange. By Taco Bell, where you can spice up the night. And by the new Chevrolets, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months, an American revolution. 
Carlos Beltran, a first inning two run home run, two nothing Astros. The Cardinals come to bat. The highest scoring team in the National League under Tony La Russa. Tony Womack at short, Larry Walker in right, Albert Pools at first, Scott Rowland at third, Jim Edmonds in center, Edgar Renteria, the shortstop, a latter third of Reggie Sanders, Mike Matheny, and Woody Williams against a 26 year old right hander, Brandon Backey. Brandon Backey, another one of those guys that signed as a second baseman, started playing in the outfield. He's only been pitching three seasons. Here's the scouting report on him. He's got to throw strikes. He needs to throw all four of his pitches and change speeds. And believe it or not, he's one of those guys that actually has to establish his breaking ball. Line into left field, a sliding catch by Biggio. And he took away a hit from Tony Womack. Take a look at the Astros defensively. We cover the field, brought to you by State Farm. Biggio started his career as a catcher, went to second base, started this year in center. He moves to left with the acquisition of Beltron. Berkman joining that duo in the outfield. Edsburg, this guy, you know, Kent at Bagwell. Solid receiver behind the plate. Brad Osmus. That's a real treat for me being a former catcher to watch these two guys go about their business tonight. Two of the best in the game with blocking balls, calling a game for their pitcher, and making those borderline pitches look just a little better. Yeah. Larry Walker came over from Colorado after the trade deadline. And what a pickup he has been. Fastball, perfect location on the inside corner, 0-2. Baggy grew up in Galveston, Texas. He grew up rooting for Biggio and Bagwell and the Astros. And now he plays alongside that duo and others. Let's check in with Chris Myers downstairs. All right, Tom. Uh, Larry said as an opponent when he would come to Bush Stadium during the regular season, even then it felt like a playoff game in October. A sea of red, fans going crazy. Now, of course, he's wearing red in his first National League Championship Series. Said he wasn't nervous about coming into this game, but four more wins, and it might get to him. It's the kind of place, it's the time of year when even a 37-year-old can get chills. Guys, I don't think there's really a home field advantage plan in St. Louis. The crowd is too nice. There's so much fun to be around. All right, we're in. You don't come. You don't come here as a visiting player and feel intimidated by this crowd. You come here and love to play the game because they're so much fun to be around. Great point. It's not like going to the Bronx for a game. No, no. Of course, Bob, you managed here against during the playoffs. Did they wear you out down there? Uh, there were a few of them down there behind that visiting dugout that were not afraid to make their feelings known, and they weren't quite as nice as the other uh, 50,298 or whatever it was. 2-2 to Walker. Ball three. Guys, what's the world coming to when the number two hitters in the lineup of three of the four teams still playing are MVPs of the league and Larry Walker, Alex Rodriguez, and Carlos Beltran? These are your number two guys. Well, you're not lying. Major League Thunder. Yeah, the two guy used to be a guy that could handle the bat, put down a bunt, you know, move the ball around a little bit. Lined in the right field. They'll try it over to back up the play. Walker making a turn, going to third. And he's in there. As the ball is cut by this time. Well, a very patient at bat for Larry Walker. Working the deep count here. Gets a pitch he likes and hits the line drive out to right field. Kirkman appeared to either lose that ball in the lights or it knuckled on him one or the other. You see the very late reaction to his right to try to get over and corral that line drive. Now, there's no question that sitting there at home, you figure that ball should be caught. Walker hustling all the way, all the way into third base. And I'll tell you, we've all been in a situation in the outfield where the ball does knuckle on you, and all of a sudden you just can't catch it. Now Albert Poole. Slider away. Well, against any club that has reached the league championship series, you can't give them additional outs. But you cannot say that enough against this Cardinal team. You give them four outs in an inning, and you are flirting with major trouble. Two and up. And, Psycho, I agree with your point. 
in the open about uh, working around Pujols to get to Roland. Scott Roland, an MVP caliber player, but he is not at his best right now. And because of that cap and his inability to run full speed, uh, you know, an unintentional, intentional walk right here would set up the possibility of a double play ball. Absolutely. I mean, he's got to prove to this Astro team right now that he could still hit. Two on the pulls. Hammered in a deep right center field. We are tied. with Tony La Russa before the game. We asked about the familiarity between these two teams. They played 18 times during the year as Roland looks at a breaking ball strike. And he said that, in his opinion, means the advantage goes to the hitters. They're familiar with the pitchers. They've seen them a lot this year, the last number of years. He said, I would expect a chance for some high-scoring yeah. games. Boy, normally you put two points on the board in the top of the first inning and you feel pretty good about your chances to win a ball game and uh, the Cardinals will have nothing to do with that. I think we're going to go through a lot of pencil lead tonight. We saw the Red Sox come back in the ball game last night against the Yankees. Both of these teams have that ability as well. Rolling on the ground to this guy. No second out of the inning. Let's check in with Jeannie Zelasco. And we're going to New York. Pedro Martinez walked Eric Jeter. Hit Alex Rodriguez by a pitch. And Gary Sheffield says, Pedro, come to Papa. Sheffield stops at first, but Jeter with the speed scores from second. Pedro struggling. Yankees leading. We'll keep you up to date the entire night on what's happening in the Bronx. By the way, Tommy, you pitch around Pujols in that situation. That ground ball by Roland ends up being a 6-4-3 double play out of the inning. You asked Phil Garner that question. Well, we sat down with him before the ball game, and he, he really evaded the question. Then at the end, had a smirk on his face as Edmonds rolls it foul, and he said, we'll see how the game plays out. Well, he may have learned the lesson right from the get-go. Yeah, he said he could tell us the answer to that question, but then he'd have to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know for a fact that managers in those meetings with the media before the ball game do not want to tip their hand in any way, shape, or form. Oh, one Edmonds. Did he go? They appeal the third base umpire, Jim Joyce, who said no, he didn't. One and one to Jim Edmonds. Edmonds, 42 home runs, 111 runs batted in during the regular year. Only 4 of 15 in the division series with a home run. Brandon Backey working on three days rest for the first time in his career. And he's given up two runs here in the opening inning. One and two to count. Edmonds has really struggled lately. His last 40 games... The last 14 games, rather, 24 strikeouts. He's always been a great guess hitter, but he goes through periods where he guesses wrong. We saw the Dodgers and Jose Lima have good success against Albert Pujols and the Cardinals by pounding him in early in the count and then off-speed pitches away. This is a fastball up and out over the plate right where those big, strong guys like him. Payoff pitch coming to Jim Edmonds. We'll do it again. You know, one thing in that swing that I hadn't noticed before, Bob, was that 
pool holds very much the same way as Edmonds doesn't stride at all. Basically shifts the weight up on the foot and then drops it right back down in the same spot. And that's what Jimmy Edmonds does as well. This foot never really moves that spot. Just picks it up and puts it right back down there. Three, two, and two out of the count. And lined in the right field of Asa by Edmonds. Edmonds a hard turn as Berkman is slow to get to it in right field. And the inning continues for Edgar Renteria. Here's what we talked about. There's that foot, just picks it up, puts it right back down. Great balance through the hitting zone right there. You can draw a line right through him down to the bottom of the ground. That's the Edmonds that this crowd has seen most of the season. And a very aggressive turn down there at first base by Jim Edmonds. He saw Lance Berkman uh, slowly going after that line drive, and Edmonds looked like he had thoughts about going for two. Yeah, he saw Lance Berkman try to make the play on Larry Walker's ball. Now Renteria. Breaking ball low and away. Now this is a guy Tony LaRusso likes to play hit and run with. Renteria, very good handler of the bat. So far, Baki been working everybody away, away, away. Could be a possible hit and run situation right here. Tony LaRusso has never taken the St. Louis Cardinals to the World Series. He's hoping to change that in 2004. Swung on and fouled out of play. We mentioned the fact that the Astros as a franchise have never been to the World Series. This Cardinal franchise, so deep and rich in winning tradition, it's hard to believe they haven't been to a World Series since 87. They haven't won one since 1982. thrown out his only stolen base attempt in the division series against the Dodgers. On the inside corner strike two to Renteria World Series hero in 1997 with the Florida Marlins. Had a terrific division series against the Dodgers. Knocked in four runs and had five base hits. Two balls, two strikes. Tommy, with all the talent on this team, it might seem strange to some people that most of the people in the clubhouse of the Cardinals ball club point to Renteria and say that's the team leader here. Very quiet kid plays hard and plays every day and everyone on that team loves him. Breaking ball and Renteria fooled badly. Caught a break by making contact and fouling it away. Well, Renteria has been the premier shortstop in the National League. You don't hear as much about him as you do Jeter or Tejada, Garcia Parra over in the American League. But he has been terrific at the plate and in the field. Another free agent at the end of the season. Gone swinging Renteria to end the inning. Beltron in the top of the first. Full holes answers in the bottom of the year. October, eight teams, one champion. Watch the World Series on Fox. Don't miss it. We begin the second inning. Game one of this National League Championship Series from sold-out Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Carlos Beltran and Albert Pools, each with two run home runs in the opening inning. Muscled in the short left center field and Renteria out to get him. Morgan Ensberg retired to begin the second inning. Jose Vizcaino with one down and nobody on. With the Cardinals having won their division series over the Dodgers in four games, Tony La Russa 
able to lay out his starting rotation exactly the way he wanted to lay it out. Conversely, for the Astros, needing five games to beat Atlanta. And in the final two games of that series, of course, they used their two big guns, Roger Clemens and Roy Oswald. So they start game one with a rookie right-hander working on three days rest. Peter Monroe, another youngster, gets the ball in game two. Clemens will start the first game in Houston. Oswald, the second game at Minute Maid Park. Two and one to Vizcaino. I think if you were a starting pitcher in this series, you want to get it out of the way in a hurry because if you sit around and watch these two offenses pummel each other for a couple <laughs> games, you might not want to take the mound later in the series. If you're a starting pitcher in this series, you want to have a bad hamstring. <laughs> Jam shot roller the Womack. Well, we talked about what Woody Williams had to do, mix in all of his pitches. His best one probably is change-up, and Scooter's here to tell us all about it. Hello, friends. It's Scooter. A change-up is just another word for a slow ball. While the batter is looking for a real fast pitch, the pitcher throws me really, really slow. Still waiting for Scooter to grow the hair out a little bit and bring back... That liking to Steve Lyons. Yeah. That's the way I sound when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> Brad Osmus with two down and nobody on. Takes outside a ball and a strike. Williams won 11 games during the regular season, made 31 starts. He pitched well and won game one of the division series against the Dodgers. Three hopper to Renteria, and Williams bounces back for the perfect second. We're tied at two. The one game one of his National League Championship Series. Throughout the LCS, we're going to identify a key matchup in the game and determine who holds the direct TV advantage. The first 12 games between these two teams, Cardinals, a two-game edge. But the last six, which meant the world to the Astros, next to nothing for St. Louis, dominated by Houston. St. Louis had the luxury of getting their pitching in order, giving some guys uh, some time off that had some bumps and bruises to heal up, while the Astros had to grind right down to the bitter end. And the simple fact is, as of right now, none of that means anything. Reggie Sanders, a big swing and a miss. He'll be followed by Mike Matheny and Woody Williams. Sanders hit 260 during the regular year, 22 home runs, 67 runs batted in. He had a home run, his only RBI, during the division series. A player for you, Bob Bradley, on that 2001 Diamondbacks World Championship team. A yeah, very good player for that team as well. One of the toughest decisions I ever had to make as a manager was sitting Reggie Sanders in Game 7 in favor of Danny Bautista, who I felt was better suited to face up against Roger Clemens in that particular game. But Reggie had a tremendous season for us that year. And it's ironic. I think Reggie doesn't realize that for most guys, the baseball season ends before October. He is always in the postseason. Four times now in the National League Championship Series. Cincinnati, Arizona, San Francisco, and now the Cardinals. A great guy. Oh, yeah. And you know that, to have an, a guy like that in your clubhouse and the ability to hit 30 home runs. I think once he's hit 20 home runs for six different teams. Rarely see him without a smile on his face. Two and one to count on Sanders. Brandon Backey, the rookie right-hander, winds and turns it loose. Breaking ball rolled over foul. Generally, when a guy travels like Reggie Sanders has traveled, and boy, is he a long smile. Traveling up originally with Cincinnati. A year later in San Diego in 99. Atlanta in 2000. The world champion Diamondbacks in 01. The Giants in a trip to the LCS in 02. The Pirates last year. And the Cardinals this year. First player in Major League history to hit 20 or more home runs in a season for six different teams. Oh, foul. Starting to say, 
generally when you see a guy move around that much, you think, well, he's got to be a bad guy. But as you just pointed out, Steve, nothing could be further from the truth. You know, he doesn't even understand it, and he's so happy that he actually signed a two-year deal here with the Cardinals. He gets to wear the same color shoes two years in a row. <laughs> I think there was a time in his career where teams were scared off because of Reggie's history of injury, but uh, over the last four or five seasons, that has not been a factor whatsoever. I also think for a long time that they thought his bat was going to slow down. He's always been susceptible to a good fastball up and in, but there are very few guys that aren't, and I'll tell you what, if you don't throw that good fastball up and in, he will hurt you. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Strike three. One away in the inning. Well, this is a danger zone, even though Backy got the strikeout right here. Reggie Sanders, a very good low ball hitter, good breaking ball for strikes hitter. He was able to get that curveball just down below the zone enough that Reggie swung right over the top of it. That's what we talked about before with Backy being able to establish both breaking balls and being able to throw them for strikes. Now Mike Matheny hit 247 during the regular year. Drove in 50 runs. And he had a home run and five RBIs in the division series against the Dodgers. Fouled away strike one. We are talking about Matheny and how good he is as a defensive catcher, and I asked him, you know, who taught you? And he told me when he was about 10 years old, he had an ex-minor league player that coached his little league team, a guy named Ron Golden, and he said, I learned more from him when I was 10 years old than I have from anybody else. When you think about it, it's the one position where there are no good instructors when you're a kid. Well, the problem with former catchers is they can't get into a crouch to show you what you're supposed to do. <laughs> so what are you saying? You feeling the aches and pains a little bit on a chilly night in St. Louis? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I miss the Arizona heat right now. But I do enjoy watching Mike Matheny. He has been one of the best in the business for a long time. Tony La Russa gives him a lot of the credit for the success of this pitching staff, along with Dave Duncan giving credit to Matheny. And says he's very hard on himself. When a pitcher gives up a home run, he feels like it was his fault for calling the wrong pitch. Good breaking ball again by Backy. Matheny chased it. Three consecutive strikeouts for the rookie right hand. Tomorrow night on Fox, game two of the National League Championship Series. Matt Morris gets the ball for St. Louis against Peter Monroe and the Astros. All the action begins with the all-new Dodge Dakota pregame show, 8 Eastern. Exclusive coverage of both league championship series presented in high definition here on Fox. Monroe has not pitched in a game since the 1st of October. Morris, a loss against Jose Lima in the division series, but threw the ball pretty well. Everybody would have lost against Jose Lima in that game. Lima time showed up big time. One out of Williams. Foul out of play. If you are looking for the Boston New York game and you're watching on your Fox affiliate, then just click right over to your local Fox Sports Net regional affiliate for that game. If you're watching us on FSN, you can catch Boston and New York on your local Fox affiliate. We'll keep reminding you of that throughout tonight and the entire postseason. Tom, you touched on a little bit earlier about the inexperience of the first two starting pitchers for the Astros and then the rest of the experience on that team. But when you think about the way this team finished, running off a 36-10 and 10 record and having to virtually win almost every one of their last 50 games, they've been playing playoff games for a long time now. Yep. It's that age-old debate. You know, if you're a team like the Cardinals, can you just turn it on? Or if you're the Astros, do you have the advantage with all that momentum? Well, the Cardinals turned it on just fine in the division series. Three and two to Woody Williams. Backy trying to fan the side here in the second. Fly ball center feed. He won't strike them all out. 
but he retires all three in the inning. Game is on. Game one of this league championship series. We're tied at two. Things off Brandon Backey, and this guy can swing the bat. Remember, he originally was a position player, and he hits that ball a ton down the left field line, but foul. Wow. That ball off the facing of the third deck. We said the guy could hit. I don't think we were thinking about the facing of the upper deck here at Bush Stadium on his first swing of the night. He can't just lay one in there, do he? Well, you get one swing like that. Woody Williams is not going to allow him to, uh, to tee it up like he did on that first pitch right there. 2-2 Two -two ball game as we open the third inning here in game one of this National League Championship Series. Look at him. He's got... Pine tar all over the bat, batting gloves. And that's the reason he's a pitcher now. He couldn't hit the curveball. <laughs> well, fellas, we figured that when you look at these two teams and you look at the lineups of each of these two teams, granted, the pitching can be very good for both at times. But Tony La Russa said it himself. He would not be surprised to see a lot of runs. Well, I think we are going to see a lot of runs in this series, but both pitchers now after that first inning have settled down and, and started doing what they do best, throwing the breaking ball, keep the ball down in the zone. Well, these are two very offensive ball clubs, and they're just going to kill mistakes. Uh, pitchers are going to be have to be on top of their game. If you miss your spot, you have to make sure you miss in your favor. If you're trying to hit the outside corner, go further away. If you're trying to go to the knees, go further down. Leaving those balls over the middle of the plate, uh, it could be a big scoring game tonight. Single in the center field, scored on the home run by Beltran. Strike one to Vigio. Well, the Killer Bees silent through their first 14 games in the postseason. Between them, not a home run and five batted in. Look what they did in the division series. Down to third. You don't want to make a living hitting it to that guy. So here comes Lowe's Beltron. Weeknights on FSN. It's the greatest nightly sports show on television. The best damn sports show, period. Coverage of the LCS and our guys bring down the game at night and preview upcoming action plus comedian Drew Carey. Weeknights only on FSN. Steve Reich won to Beltron. Who lined a two-run homer to right field in the top half of the first inning off Woody Williams. And this ball hit a mile foul. That one didn't get to the facing of the upper deck. That went in it. If you're sitting in that Cardinals dugout right now, you have to rethink your game plan against the Astros. It is very apparent that this young man is as locked in as a hitter can possibly be. Even his outs and his foul balls are matched. <laughs> See what Matheny did right there, drug his glove across the ground to try to get Woody Williams to make sure he kept that pitch down. And that is the fact. I mean, so far in the division series and so far in this game, he is getting good pitches to hit. And you can tell by taking a pitch like that, he's seeing the ball very well right now. That's what I just mentioned a moment ago. If you're going to miss, miss in your favor. Woody Williams trying to hit the bottom of the zone right there. He missed a little bit too low. Retired nine in a row. Two two game. Middle of the third. Pool holes coming up. Top of the order coming up for the St. Louis Cardinals. Bottom of the third inning in a two two game, and Brandon Backing delivers a fastball strike one to Tony Womack, who lined out to the left fielder Craig Biggio his first time up. interesting Cardinal fans now cheer on Womack. Probably go back to the 2001 team you managed in Arizona that won the World Series. Womack eliminated the Cardinals in the decisive game five in the bottom of the ninth inning with a base hit off Steve Klein. 
It really bailed me out. We tried to squeeze play with a runner at third base, and uh, it did not work. Steve Klein threw a slider in the dirt. Tony couldn't get a bat on it. We ran into an out at home plate, and a couple pitches later, Tony lofted one into left field for a base hit to win the ball game. One and two to Womack. Tony has really changed his game offensively. I think Mitchell Page, the hitting coach for the Cardinals, has really struck a nerve with Tony Womack. He used to hit a lot of lazy fly balls to left field on pitches up and out over the plate. Uh, when he does swing at that ball now, as we saw in his first at bat, he's hitting line drives and hard ground balls to left field. What a turnaround season it was indeed for Womack under Mitchell Page. And that was coming off Tommy John elbow surgery at the end of last season. Look at the numbers. They clearly do not lie. The third biggest increase in the National League, the batting average. He also changed his game when he started playing for you, Bob, in Arizona. Learned how to bunt a little more often. Just 10 bunt hits this season, but 39 infield hits. And the threat of the bunt moves the defense around so much that he can slap the ball past the third baseman. Third baseman generally has to come in a little bit in this area if he's thinking about the bunt. Now with two strikes, obviously not funny. And that's really changed and helped his game. And generally, when you think of pull hitters, you think of the big, strong guys in the middle of the, of the lineup. Tony Womack has as quick a bat as anybody in the National League. You try to throw him a fastball inside, even inside off the plate, and he's able to get the head of the bat on and pull that ball into right field, which is why most teams elect just to pitch him away and play him away. Which is another one of the big hits he had in the 2001 World Series when he doubled down the right field line in game seven. Swing and a miss on the back E breaking ball. He has now struck out four of the last five batters he's faced. Breaking ball down and out over the plate, but the key word there is down. That pitch is up around the thigh. It's not a tough pitch to hit, but you keep it down in the zone, you're not going to reach it. Larry Walker tripled on a line drive that was misplayed badly by Lance Berkman in the first inning. A ball that should have been caught. Berkman came in after the inning when he missed that ball in right field was talking to Gary Gaetti the hitting coach for the Astros and it, it appeared he was saying that the ball was up in the lights but uh, certainly the way it changed direction it got so far away from him it may have been in the lights and knuckling at the same time tough combination Chopper back to backy and the other hand flipped to Bagwell two up two down and here comes Albert Pools. Think of all the great players that Tony La Russa has managed. And La Russa has come out point blank and said, this kid is the best player I've ever managed. That is pretty high praise. Tony has had some of the best in the game. Uh, Jose Canseco, when he was in his prime, stealing bases, hitting home runs. Mark McGuire. I mean, you could make a laundry list of great players that Tony La Russa has managed. And for him to single this guy out is really saying something. Scattered his own bullpen. The guys out there didn't even want to try to catch it. <laughs> Would you? No thanks. You talk about the praise that Tony La Russa heaps on pool holes. There's only two guys in the history of the game that have more RBIs than he has in his first four seasons. Those guys' names are Ted Williams and Joe DiMaggio. Well, he got fooled on a breaking ball and hits it into the second deck foul. Here's what you were talking about, Steve. In the history of baseball, and you're in company 
with Joe DiMaggio and Ted Williams. As you like to say, that's big league. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> that's a nice neighborhood right there. Yeah. Two again to pool. Breaking ball just off the outside corner. Now the numbers go on and on for a guy like Pool Holes. He's the first guy ever to hit 300, drive in 100 runs, and have 30 home runs in his first four seasons. And no one else has ever done that twice. And the guy just goes on and on and on every year he plays. And for those that know him well, his teammates, his manager, the coaches, those that work in the organization, they say he's an even better person than he is a player. Well, you talk about high praise. The youngest of 11 kids in his family. Two-two. Another breaking ball, and again, Pool holds lays off up. You see that little move right there? He checked his swing and instantly asked to see the baseball so that no one else could really check to see if he actually swung at the pitch. <laughs> Watch him check the ball. Gets the catcher's mind off, off of checking the, the umpire and whether or not he actually swung at that. Let's do something different. Before they have a chance to appeal it down to the first <laughs> base umpire, distract him quickly. There you go. <laughs> Swinging, breaking ball after breaking ball, and boy, what a lift that is for Back. He has now struck out five of the last seven he's faced. Well, all of a sudden, the pitcher's duel has broken out. After a two-run first inning for both the Astros and the Cardinals, Woody Williams has retired the last nine. Brandon Backey has set down seven in a row. And the heart of the order for the Astros here in the fourth. Bagwell, Berkman, and Kent. Guys, I had a nice little conversation with Williams yesterday, and I asked him about facing this lineup and who the toughest guys were to face. And just to talk about his attitude and the way he approaches his business, he said, if I locate my pitches, none of them are tough. That's what you like to hear your starting pitcher say before he goes out and takes the ball to start a NLCS game. And I think that's the way most pitchers in the major leagues feel. If they're on top of their game, if they're hitting their spots, they can get anybody out. Yeah, it's not about having a cocky attitude or anything, but that goes to show you the bulldog type mentality that he has when he goes to the mound. Well, he needs it against this guy because Bagwell has worn him out through the years. 348 batter with five home runs against Woody Williams. Nobody has more career homers against Williams than Bagwell. Try to get Bagwell to chase here, full count. Yeah, really, you look up and down this Astros lineup, there's only a few hitters that Woody Williams has handled very well in his career. The rest of them have uh, had their share of hits and long balls. The one guy who he had contained before tonight was Carlos Belt. One for 11, an 091 average, but certainly changed that with his first at bat in the ball game tonight. Three and two. Rounded foul. Well, the man on deck has had a few problems with Woody Williams as well. Lance Berkman. Berkman struck out his first time tonight. And only eight hits and 36 career at bats. Pretty good names on that list. And he draws a leadoff walk. We had a chance in between innings to catch up with St. Louis skipper Tony LaRusa. Tony, your impressions very early on of Woody Williams. Well, at first inning, you know, he got the ball in the middle and up and got hurt. But the last two, he's been a lot sharper. Same thing with uh, Brandon Beckey. Yeah, Tony, we talked before the ball game that this had a chance to be a high-scoring series, and certainly the first inning, it looked like it was going to go that way, but uh, as you said, it looks like both pitchers have settled in. I, I really think it's going to be that simple. If guys pitch like they did in the first, there's going to be a lot of runs. If they pitch like the last couple, then it's going to be tough. Tony, thank you for your time. Okay. We thank Tony LaRusso for joining us. Strike called on the outside corner. 
There haven't been a lot of pitches out over the middle of the plate since that first inning. Both guys are doing an outstanding job now of locating their pitches, and it is that simple. Bagwell, the first base runner for Houston, since the 2 1 home run by Beltron in the opening inning. One and one to Berkman. Bagwell, six stolen bases in 10 attempts during the regular year. Doesn't run with nearly the frequency of days gone by. A little mini shift here on the infield. Uh, you see Scott Rowland, the third baseman, playing well off the line, and Edgar Renteria straight up the middle. Roll it to the right side. Womack throws low, and what a nice play by Renteria to pick that out of the dirt. You do defensively when you overshift on a hitter as you put guys in positions that they're not used to being and Tony Womack going way in the hole from his normal position he would just take the out at first base but knowing how much time he had he tried to spin and throw back to second the throw is in the dirt and as you said Tom a nice play by Renteria to stay on the bag. What makes that even a nicer play by Renteria is he's totally expecting that ball to be on the left side of his body so that he can get momentum to move on and throw the ball to first base. That throw catches him off guard and goes way off to the right side of his body, and he had to have great body control just to make the play. Now the second baseman, Jeff Kent. He popped up to Tony Womack, ending the opening inning. Jeff Kent, the all-time leader in career home runs as a second baseman, going by the likes in recent years of Joe Morgan, Ryan Sandberg. And against St. Louis pitching this season, Kent knocked in 14 runs in the 18 games and hit three long ones. has allowed two runs on two hits. They came to the first two batters of the game. He has since struck out three and walked only one. Got in on Kent's hands with that pitch, and he dumps it foul. Kent fouled the ball off his foot in game five of the division series against Atlanta. Said it swelled way up. They were concerned at first that it might be broken, but Kent said, I'm not going to have it x-rayed because what difference does it make? I'm not going to quit playing. If it's broken, I'm playing anyway. Why would I even want to know? Nearly 90 full feet on the right side of that infield for Kent, who rarely ever hits a ball the other way. But with two strikes and this at bat, he may be looking to shoot one that way. Instead, it's in the air to deep left field. Going back to the wall, Sanders and Kent has given Houston a 4-2 lead. Two-run home run of the game. Beltron and Pools in the first. Kent here in the fourth. Appeared to be just a breaking ball that hung up over the middle of the plate. You see the rotation there. Tight spin, but the ball just never takes a bite. Hangs up there about belt high for Jeff Kent. Matheny out on the outside corner, but the ball never gets there. I'll tell you what, Jeff Kent did a great job of staying down over the top of that ball, too. That would have could have been a ball that he still could have pulled off of, stayed down over the top of it, and just jerked it into left field. I told you he'd go the other way with a pitch from Woody Wood. <laughs> now, you talked about it before, too, Tommy. That's his fourth home run against the Astros this year. He's hitting better than 360. Kent had a pretty quiet division series, but a loud swing here. And you see the beginnings of a home run trot, the first two or three steps out of the box. Don Tamargo, the bench coach for the Astros, along with Bill Garner. 
giving that ball a little extra help. I don't think it needed any. Two and two to Morgan Ensberg. He popped up to Edgar Renteria's first time up. Had an interesting conversation with Ensberg today. He told me, I'm one of those guys that I have no idea what pitch I hit when I hit it. Because I try to lock in, I see the ball, and I swing. A lot of times I have no idea if it was a slider or a curveball or a fastball until I come back and look at it on tape again. They looked at me and said, my favorite line, no brain, no headache. <laughs> in the air, foul territory, and the pool's leaning into the stands, but it's out of play. Well, you can play Hit the Pros, presented by the all-new GMC Canyon, and face real That's pitches from today's best hurlers. Log on to FoxSports.com, keyword games, GMC, we are professional grade. Two to Ensberg. In the air, pretty well hit right center field. Walker going back to the track. This is what I love about a guy like Larry Walker, who is an older five-tool player now, but an outfielder that will turn his back and run on the ball, go find it, and then turn back and catch it. He knew where the ball was going to end up. He turned his back, ran to the spot where it was going to land so he could get there as quick as possible and then turned around and made the play. Some kind of talent that guy has. Well, he's always had tremendous instincts for the game of baseball, even though he was raised on hockey. Canadian born and raised to Larry Walker. Boy, but he's been playing this game as though they invented this game up north. This guy, you know, dumps one in the right field, a base hit. Jose with his first hit tonight, his third of the postseason. And the inning continues for the catcher, Brad Osmus. Osmus grounded out to Edgar Renteria, ending the Houston second inning. Astros with a 4-2 lead. Whoa. Broken bat roller down to roller. And the inning is over. But the Astros recapture the lead. Jeff Kent plays long ball to the seats in left. Jeff Kent. His first postseason home run in 2004 has given Houston a two-run lead in game one of this National League Championship Series. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Roland Edmonds and Renteria coming up against Brandon Backey, who's retired seven in a row and struck out five of the last seven, primarily on that breaking ball. There it is for a strike. He doesn't want to throw anything else. He shook off two other pitches to get back to that one. That one hung a little bit, though, Bob. Now, most of them have been down low in the strike zone or out of the strike zone down low. That one was up a little bit. Rolled over foul. Brandon's father, Harold, brought him his first bat when he was one year of age. And all through his youth, his father worked with his son on the baseball diamonds of Galveston, Texas, and both dreamed that one day he would one day play for the Astros. Wow. As Game an outfielder. Starter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy, no idea if he's standing on the bump. Fastball up and in. Good pitch there on a 1-2 count. Now we touched on it briefly earlier, the game that Jose Lima pitched against this Cardinal team in L.A. really worked the inside part of the plate, pounding the fastball in on the hands of the Cardinals hitters, and then going away with off-speed stuff. I like that pitch right there, too. He looked like he was setting up to go back to the breaking ball, and then he went fastball away to try to freeze roll, and it looked like a pretty darn good pitch. Where did this miss? 
in the postseason. We caught up with Astros pitching coach Jim Hickey from their dugout a moment ago. Uh, Jim, with the young pitcher Brandon Backey on the mound tonight uh, facing the lineup that the Cardinals are running out there, how did you keep his nerves in check in preparation for this game? Well, he's, he's a pretty excitable guy to begin with, regardless if he was uh, pitching in New Orleans earlier in the season or here in the uh, league championship series against the Cardinals. But he's done a good job of channeling it. You know, he's, he's excitable, he's emotional, um, but, but he's done a really nice job of just kind of, you know, taking it and, and using it to his advantage, really. Jim, how daunting a task has it been for you coming up halfway through the season? with the veterans like Clemens and Pettit around and then the mix of younger guys like Monroe and Backey. Well, the older guys that you mentioned, that's not a daunting task at all. That's actually a lot easier because those guys are, you know, they're pretty much on autopilot. They know what they need to do. And I was very familiar with the rest of the younger guys, so it really wasn't that uh, big of a deal at all, really. I think there was one pitcher on the staff that I had to introduce myself to when I got here, and that was David Weathers. Jim, thanks for your time. Thank you. Good luck. Well, that got to get into broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a pretty good job at his, uh, his day job right now. Right about that. Low to Jim Edmonds. And Brandon Backey in business thus far here tonight. That opening inning, the two-run home run allowed a full hole since then. Nary a hit, nary a run. And much more pitch efficient. Two and one to Edmonds. Foul out of play again on the breaking ball. Now, Tommy, we said it was a little unusual, but we said back he had to establish his breaking ball today. And that's exactly what he's done. Backy, a big deep breath. Says to himself, come on. We talked about the breaking ball and how good it's been for him tonight. Watch the location. There's a strikeout of Renteria with the breaking ball. Sanders goes down. Hard, nasty breaking pitch. And then Womack once again. And as you talked about, almost none of those he loves strikes. To play baseball. Oh, <laughs> he is something, man. Gotta love him. Well, put a smile on your face when you see a pitcher pounding that breaking ball down at the bottom of the strike zone like that. You notice Brad Austin was dropping to a knee on every one of those pitches in preparation to block it. Well, the first time since the first inning that Backey now has to work out of the stretch. And he faces Edgar Renteria. Well, it looks to me like Renteria has stepped much closer to home plate than he was his first time, maybe trying to protect from that hard sweeping breaking ball away. Maybe he can reach it if he gets on top of the plate. Pitch out, nothing going on. You know, that's not all bad, Tom. A lot of times you will attempt to pitch out or show a pitch out just to let the other dugout know that you're keeping an eye on him. You know there's a runner down there at first with better than average speed. You know you've got a guy at the plate that handles the bat very well, and you're just not going to lay the ball over the plate and let them play games with you. you got to show a pitch out once in a while just to keep the Cardinals honest. The other thing it does for you, too, is it kind of detours the guy from putting on a hit-and-run situation. As you talked about before, Bob, Renteria handles the bat very well. You can put guys in motion. Last thing you want on a hit and run is a pitch out. Renteria taking a look at a third base coach, Jose Akendo. Had a lot of rain here in St. Louis over the last three days. The grounds crew did an outstanding job getting this surface ready to play baseball here tonight. Three 
balls and no strikes. You know, Tommy, they're building the new stadium here, and they're going to have to go a long way to make that place nicer than the one they're playing in right now. The only thing that was ever wrong with Bush Stadium was the AstroTurf, and once that went away, this is uh, still one of the nicest ballparks in uh, Major League Baseball. Great atmosphere, great fans. Real pitch, and there's a strike. We brought up the point a moment ago. It's the first time since the opening inning, and here we are in the fourth, that Backey has had to work out of the stretch, and sometimes you will see a pitcher momentarily, sometimes for an extended period of time, lose their command. Especially a guy who's only been pitching for three years of his life. Edmonds figures to be on the move here, three and one. There he goes. And it's ball four. A hit batsman and a walk. And the Cardinals in business with Reggie Sanders coming up. Let's check in with our fourth member of the broadcast team, Chris Myers. Tom, uh, Bob, and Steve, Tony Womack told me before the game that in studying Brandon Backy, not that they had that much to study, that it wasn't a guy they could exactly run on, but when they had base runners on, they thought they could rattle him, that it would affect the way he would pitch to batters more so than maybe an established veteran. It's something we're seeing the Cardinals put into play here. We'll see how Brandon Backy responds. And we saw Backy during the course of that at bat by Edgar Renteria step off the back of the mound, dig some dirt out of his cleats. After delivering a pitch to home plate, he looked back at the rubber. It seems like he's having some problems with his footing out there right now. Well, beginning this weekend, Oscar De La Hoya and the next great champ are bringing an all-new episode to their new home on FSN. Eight contenders remain to see who has the heart and skill to be a champion. The next great champ is now only on FSN. Chad Harville, the right-hander, begins to throw in the Houston bullpen. Tom, you brought it up that Backy hasn't been in the stretch very often in this game, and his foot may not drop in the same spot out of the stretch as it does out of his windup, and that may be some of the problems he's having out there. Reggie Sanders struck out his first time up. Bounces that breaking ball. Well, clearly he's not feeling it working out of the stretch, as he did in that pattern through the second and third innings, working out of the regular windup. This is where you start looking for body language. Earlier in the game, he was getting the ball, getting right back on the rubber and throw it. Now, after every pitch, he gets it, walks around, is unsure. Well, I think part of that is also the byproduct of this Cardinals lineup. Uh, we talked about it early in the telecast. There are no breaks. You're facing Reggie Sanders here in the seven hole, a guy that hit 22 home runs this year. One well, to Sanders. On the ground, down to third. Second for one, and that's a double play. And the rookie Backy sprints off the map. He leads at the end of four by two. We're back after a break from your local Fox station. Brandon Backy first pitch swinging as we open the fifth inning. One pitch and one out for Woody Williams. But what a big double play turned by the Astros to end the inning. Where the key is Morgan Ensberg getting this thing started quickly. Reached across to the backhand side. Immediately unloaded that throw to Jeff Kennett, second base. A good, quick turn. And look at the youngster jumping off the mound. <laughs> well, we heard from everybody how excitable he is. And we certainly saw that during the division series game he pitched. I mean, he was the number one cheerleader down in that dugout when they were scoring runs for him. Good for him. A little enthusiasm, a little fire. Biggio trying to bunt his way on, fouls it off. I just don't think you ever get tired of watching guys that love to play the game. No. That's why we had such a good time watching that Jose Lima game the other night. The game's supposed to be fun. I mean, this is obviously the highest level. The guys are making a very good living playing this game, but there's no reason you can't play with enthusiasm and a little zest. Uh, that bunt there in foul territory down the third baseline. Watch Scott Rowland with that bad calf. As he limps over there into foul territory. Well, you 
talked about Jeff Kent, what a tough guy he is. Rollins another one. Is he uh, popped up in a short left field and Sanders has got it for the second out of the inning. Sanders is one of those guys, or rather Roland is one of those guys, I beg your pardon. And, and there are certainly, a, you know, maybe a couple of dozen in both leagues, Steve and Bob, where every baseball person you talk to, manager, coach, player, scout, general manager, every one of them will say, I'll take him on my team all day, every day. Talk to people that say he was born to be a baseball player, which is ironic because he signed a basketball letter of intent to play at Georgia. <laughs> Carlos Beltran the batter. Swing and a foul ball back to the screen. Beltran. One and one count. He started his scoring in this one with that laser to the first row in right field. Boy, even his home run trot looks pretty. fly ball in the right field. He missed that pitch by a millimeter. And the inning is over. I wouldn't throw that guy many strike. <laughs> Houston leads 4-2 midway through. Brandon Backey, the Galveston, Texas native, climbs a mound here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Leading in game one of his National League Championship Series on enemy turf. 4-2 ball game. Mike Matheny down a strike. Matheny not generally a superstitious player like a lot of guys are, but he was riding to work one day, listening to his favorite country music radio station. 93.7 the ball, and there's a morning DJ known as Cornbread. Matheny called him to talk a little baseball. He hit a home run that day. Later on, he called him again, hit a home run that day, did it three consecutive times, and from what I understand now, he's calling him every day for the play. <laughs> he might want to dial him up here in the fifth. <laughs> Matheny so far 0 for 2 tonight. Mike Gallo, the left-hander, Chad Balls, the right-hander, getting loose. Let's check in with Chris Meyer. Yeah, Tom, you mentioned that, you know, both pitchers are from the uh, state of Texas. And, uh, of course, Woody Williams, Brandon Backey, they think of themselves as major leaguers with a football toughness. And Backey quit playing football as a quarterback at Texas after his junior year to pursue a baseball career, which is unheard of in that state. But so far, you know, instead of a couple of guys from Texas playing football, instead of Friday night lights for Backey, it's been Wednesday night lights out so far. How true that is. I think he made a good choice. Well, in his junior season, he led his football team to the semifinals of the state. He's a pretty good quarterback, too. They play pretty good high school football down in the Lone Star State. Well, it's sort of like the problem with Roland. We talked about him being born to be a baseball player when he signed a letter of intent to play at Georgia for basketball. He grew up in Indiana, right. where it's a hotbed for basketball. He didn't have a choice. One and one to Williams. Breaking ball in the air, right field. Pretty well hit. Berkman has it sailed under his head against the wall. And Woody Williams with a one out double. The first Cardinal hit since a home to single by Edmonds in the first inning. Boy, and this is trouble. This is the last thing you want to see if you're the Houston Astros. Have that number nine hitter, the pitcher, get on base. A breaking ball that just stayed up enough for Woody Williams to drive it into right field. Now you've got the top of the Cardinals order coming up with one out, a runner on second base. And you can't even blame Berkman for that. With a pitcher coming up, you generally the opposite field will play more shallow. But as we've talked a couple times in this game, Williams, a former shortstop, Backey, a former outfielder. Both of the guys can swing the bat. Tony Womack is lined to left and struck out. Breaking ball in there, strike. Ensberg two steps in on the grass at third base. Guarding against the bunt. Ball away, a ball and a strike to Womack. This is what we talked about the way 
Womack moves guys around. Look at him bringing Ensberg in over here. The shortstop's playing up the middle of the guard right there. There's a lot of holes in the infield. It's a lot easier for Womack to slap the ball past Ensberg at third when he's playing in like that. Pepper to short. Charging this kind of blows out Womack. Williams advances to third, two away at Ian. Tonight's Budweiser fantasy player, Sadeki Matsua. What a night he had in the Bronx last night. Five runs batted in. Log on to FoxSports.com, keyword fantasy baseball. Today's game brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Big, big, big at bat for Brandon Backey right now. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a tying run, Larry Walker. Backey works out of the regular windup. Strike one. Well, you got to give the kid all the credit in the world. First time in his career. He's working on three days rest, and so far he's made the big pitches when he's needed the most. He made the one mistake to pull. That's been it. Fastball strike one, curveball backdoor strike two. He is painting right now. Why swing at it? You can't hit that pitch. Said it again. Come on. Drive in Williams, and Walker pulls up with a run scoring double to make it a one run game. And hopefully, everybody's all right. The head of that bat went flying near the stands. That's one of the scariest things you'll ever see at a ball game when a bat breaks like that and ends up in the stands. But look where the ball goes the other way, and because of the strength of Walker, is able to knock it down the double. That's where this game will make you scratch your head. Brandon Backey out there making good pitches. It's in the kitchen of Larry Walker. Gets just enough of it to float it out there into shallow left field. Drive in the run. Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, coming out to visit. Steve, you talked about it before we ever started this game tonight. Scott Rowland still does not have a base hit in the postseason. You have a base open right now with a tying run out there at second. Do you walk Albert Pujols and pitch to Roland in this situation? I would do that. I, if they're not going to walk him, they're going to do the unintentional intentional walk, pitch around him. But he is too good a bad ball hitter for me. He proved that in the first inning with a ball up and away from him, maybe out of the strike zone. He drove it out of the ballpark. Bob, you walk him? I definitely walk him right here. I got to put it on Scott Roll until he shows me that physically he can swing that bat and do some damage. And, and we all know we're talking about a guy that had 34 homers and 124 RBIs this year and hit 315. And the fourth best batting average of runners in scoring position in the National League, Albert Pools. Now, Brad Hoffman keeps sticking that right hand way out to his right. Did it a couple of times before time was called. Watch that pitch in the dirt, ball one. Well, why even bother messing around? As you see, Osmus here giving him the sign, apparently, for the unintentional, intentional walk. I, I, I don't see the point in this. If you, if you don't care if you walk the guy, go ahead and walk him. Walk him. There, there's no reason to pitch to him right now. It might be a different story if you had the rocket out there on the mound or a veteran like Greg Maddox or somebody who you are very confident knows how to pitch around a hitter, but... Albert Pujols can reach a lot of pitches out of the strike zone. And he just made a mistake to Walker on 0-2. Big decision here by Phil Garner. Breaking ball away 2-0. We'll see if they extend the right hand. Osmus now looking into the dugout. And no sign from Garner to walk it. He sort of nodded his head. In some question that Osman must have asked. Will they get a strike? Pools disagree. Well, 
Albert Pujols is pretty sure he knows what's going on here. He figures yeah. the Astros are pitching around him and felt that pitch was a little away and a little down and uh, disagrees with Tim Welke somewhat. Tying run is Larry Walker at second base here in the bottom of the fifth. Scott Rowland, 0 for 12 in the division series against the Dodgers. He is grounded to short and struck out looking tonight. Jordan Larusa told us, however, that should they be fortunate enough to get to Game Seven of the World Series, Scott Rowland is the kind of player that could go over the entire postseason, but come up with that one big at bat when you need it the most. We won. Although all day long we've been talking about our strategy and it would be going after Scott Rowland. If they get the seventh game of the World Series, I'd bet the house that he doesn't go over. <laughs> Bill Garner going to take the kid out. Besides having good. No. Hey, Howie, what are you doing? Sleep and wake up. Hey, bucket head, get up. Hey, nice. Solid effort here tonight, working on three days rest for the first time in his young pitching career for Brandon Mackey. He leaves leading by a run, but leaves with two on and two out of the Cardinal fifth. And Scott Rowland coming up against right-hander Chad Walls. What a season this kid has had for the Houston Astros, getting called up. Hard sinker, slider, and a split finger. They're going to try to get in on the hands of Rowland. Wider away, ball one. Of course, Walls tagged with the blown save following Roger Clemens in game four of a National League Division Series. He gave up the three-run home run to Adam LaRoche. So now rolling. Ball and a strike. Kid pitched his heart out right there. Oh, for his last 16 with four strikeouts is rolling. The 1 1 pitch. to drive home the tying run of this ball game. A bullet through the left side of the infield. And you can hold good hitters down for a while, but eventually they're going to reach their level. Edmonds first pitch swinging fouls it out of play. Now look at everybody running around the bases on the base hit by Roland. Now we talked about that in the open. If the Cardinals are going to have success in this series, he is going to have to get going and look out. I still disagree with pitch selection, though. That pitch was not where it was supposed to be. They tried to go in, but they went away the first two pitches. Oh, and two. As you talked about before in that Dodger series, and you know the Houston Astros have some scouting reports on that, they pounded him up and in on his hands, and he was helpless throughout the series. 4-4 four, four game, last of the fifth. Had been a single, had been hit by a pitch. He's behind 0-2. Oh. I think Phil Garner wondering where in the world that pitch was. It was one of the pitches you'll see right-handers deliver. Greg Maddox made it, of course, a 
a pitch you see regularly. It starts in on a left-hander and then comes back across the plate. Well, different pitchers call it different things. An off-the-body sinker, a comebacker. Pitches the same thing. Starts inside off the plate, tails back over the inside corner to a left-handed hitter. Bill Garner coming out to the mound to visit with Qualls. Let's check in with Chris Meyer. Hey, Tom, it's as loud as it was since the early home run by uh, Pujols in the game. The Cardinal fans dressed in red as usual with their thunder sticks. And one thought on, on Scott Rowe, and I talked to him before the game, he, he won't tell you he's injured and the injury's not an excuse, but he said, if I'm in the lineup, I'm accountable. And when I asked him if he was in pain, Rowan said yes, but that doesn't mean I can't hit the ball. And if you remember, Tony La Russa told us, and unless he cries uncle, uh, he's going to be in our cleanup spot. But just his mere presence in that lineup and the fact that Bill Garner and the Astros know what Scott Rowland is capable of. That's one thing about the game of baseball. It tends to eat over a period of time, and a great hitter like Scott Rowland being 0 for 16 coming into that at bat, one person would say he's in a slump, the other person would say he's due. Four for his last 34, so I'd say that, yes, he's definitely due. One and two to Evans. Got him swinging to end the inning, but the Cardinals tie it up. Rolling his first hit of the postseason to tie it at four. Game one, National League Championship Series. Great to have you with us from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. A 4-4 game. And again, a reminder for those of you looking for the Boston-New York game and you're watching us on your Fox affiliate, click on over to your local FSN regional network channel. If you're watching us on FSN, you can catch the Yankees and Red Sox on your local Fox network affiliate. All the talk about Boston and New York, very little talk nationally about this Cardinal Astro series. We're getting a taste through the first five innings on what kind of series this could be. Some of the great sluggers in the game on both of these teams. High octane offenses, solid defenses, and pitching that's been good enough. I mean, the Cardinals had the second best ERA, which Steve, you brought it up earlier. Really a surprise to everyone when you look at the names they had going into this season. Thought maybe middle of the pack. Their starters have pitched well enough to get to the bullpen, which is the best in the National League. Man, if you don't think the St. Louis Cardinals didn't know that they were going to be on the national stage when you walked into their clubhouse today, there was a big sign on the wall that said, haircuts today. <laughs> they hired somebody to come in and give everyone a haircut if they needed one. Well, you needed one. Why didn't you join the party? I was studying. Oh. I'm not sure about the Cardinals case, but usually there's a player or a trainer or somebody on the ball club who fancies themselves as an amateur barber. Now, I asked Jose Okendo about that. I said, who's the guy that does it? He goes, oh, no, we hire someone to bring him in. There's nobody that we let anybody touch our heads. That's a good call. Three and two. And fouled back out of play. Well, obviously, in the Boston clubhouse, they lost the barber's number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. Woody Williams up to 83 pitches in the ball game. Cruising right along. Not a particularly high number for Woody Williams. But knowing Tony La Russa and knowing that Cardinals bullpen, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see somebody get up and start stirring around down there just in case something breaks out here. It's interesting to note, talked about it at the time, you could make a very strong argument that Woody Williams has one of the biggest hits in this game. That double with one out that started the rally in the bottom of the fifth inning. <laughs> location, location, location for Woody Williams. Filthy fastball in the outer half. Baggy got no chance of hitting that thing. Four strikeouts in the game for the Cardinal right-hander. 
He's walked one. Now he turns his attention to Lance Berkman, whom he struck out. Bounce into a fielder's choice, and Berkman scored on the home run by Kent. We are seeing in this game, too, with two basic finesse-type pitchers, both of the guys that started the game, we're seeing Tim Welke, the home plate umpire, let the, the strike zone expand, which is rare in the playoffs. The scrutiny of the strike zone, the many camera angles that will show, and the fact that usually in the playoffs they're going to make you throw it over the plate in order to get something. Williams has been able to hit his spots well enough to get a little bit more of the plate. Pull to the right side, will not get there. Ken, who gave the Astros a two-run lead in the fourth inning. Uh, Jeff Ken has made a living out of doing this, picking on those hanging breaking balls. Very quick from the middle of the plate in, whether it's a breaking ball or a fastball. Jeff Ken extremely quick on those pitches from the middle in. Well, there was a time a couple of years ago in the middle of that order for the San Francisco Giants where I never saw two guys better at hitting hang and breaking balls than Kent and Rich Aurelia. Two down, nobody on. The 1-0 to Kent. Down and away. Two balls and no strikes. Kent a part of that San Francisco Giants team in 2002 that came into the playoffs as a National League wild card and knocked off the St. Louis Cardinals in the National League Championship Series. It only took them five games to do it. Doesn't look like they're all that interested in giving Kent anything to take a swing at. Game two coming your way right here on Fox tomorrow night. Ken Hacken, 3-0. That's not really that surprising. Phil Garner has always been a very aggressive manager. He, he trusts his players, especially his veteran players, to get a pitch they can handle on 3-0. and And if they get something they like, uh, he's not afraid to turn them loose. Oh, that's fouled off that same foot, Tom. Oh, and Ken, so slow to get up. That one looked like it got him up a little bit higher on the ankle, perhaps just above the shoe. Get another look at it here. And as bad as that hurts, Bobby, that, that's probably a good thing. And he fouls a ball off the same spot on his foot like he did in Game 5 of the Divisional Series. We may be looking at a broken foot. I'm surprised he's not wearing some kind of pr protective guard on his, on his shoe or on the lower part of his uh, left leg there. Some guys just aren't that comfortable wearing that stuff, but now he's got two owies. <laughs> I imagine he'll call him something other than Owies if you ask him about him. Well, that's because Kent grew up in Southern California and Steve grew up in Oregon. Okay. What do they call him in Southern California? It's a very good question. <laughs> it hurts, I know that. all over a pitch, hooks it foul. <laughs> guy in the, that guy in the crowd went right over that railing, dove over that railing to get the ball. <laughs> Just like Edmonds would do. Yeah, we've seen Edmonds make a lot of diving catches. National League Championship Series. The Astros and Cardinals tied at four. Six, seven, eight in the batting order. That trio 0 for six tonight. But they did major damage in that division series against the Dodgers. In the center field, base hit by Renteria. 
While we have a moment, let's send it back to Los Angeles. Here's Jeannie Zalasco. Hey, we're going to the Bronx. 100 pitches, the watermark for Pedro Martinez. Then all bets are off. See, that was 106. Gone. Courtesy John Olrood. First home run of this postseason. Ninth career playoff home run. Yankees lead. Jeannie, thank you very much. Jeannie will continue to bring you up to date on what's going on in the Bronx. Now Reggie Sanders. Talked about six, seven, and eight in the Cardinal batting order in that division series. The trio hit three home runs and knocked in nine runs. Really until game four. And Larry Walker in game one. The Dodgers pitched the meat of this batting order pretty well during that division series. But the bottom of the order got him. And that's what this kind of lineup can do to you. There's just no breather. There's no easy outs anywhere in this line. Renteria had 17 stolen bases during the regular year. Was thrown out 11 times. Broken bat at the middle. Kent knocks it down with a no play. Balls does his job here. Hard sinker down and in, trying to get the ground ball double play. Look out for the bat, and then Kent doing his best to get up the middle to make this play, but can't get there. Well, now the Cardinals in business. They have activity in their bullpen. Kiko Calero cranking it up. Down in the Houston bullpen, Mike Gallo throws again. You got to believe Matheny's going to be up there to try and advance the runners with a butt. He had five sacrifices during the regular season. Bunted perfectly. And that's the thing about this Cardinal team. As lethal as its batting order is from top to bottom, they can also beat you with small ball. Matheny fundamentally sound no matter what he does. Look at where Bagwell is. If you bunt the ball to the right side, you're looking at an out at third base. He puts the ball in the exact perfect position. Bagwell doesn't have to hold the runner on, so he does what he's supposed to do, come in and charge hard. Matheny drops the ball to the left side of the infield where Ensberg has to play his position. Perfectly done. So Woody Williams taken down, gives up four runs, four hits in six innings. Roger Cedeno, the pinch hitter, 11 of 45 off the bench during the regular year with nine runs batted in. Broken bat roller, that is a fair ball. And Bagwell makes a tag, and the go-ahead run scores. play broken bat roller up the first baseline Renteria got a great jump it's clearly a fair ball Bagwell fields and makes the tag to Cedeno but Renteria with a great jump off of third base challenging the arm of Jeff Bagwell and well either thought that ball was foul or just elected not to throw the ball home because Renteria got such a good jump and I don't think Bagwell has a choice there to think about letting it go hoping it will go foul you got to take an out somewhere I think Renteria got such a great jump, and Bagwell did have to move far enough to that ball so that it was an easy play for Renteria to score. Plus, Bagwell can't throw the ball from me to you. Well, you take a look at that stat. There's a bouncing ball, and an infield hit for Womack makes it a two-run Cardinal lead. Starting with 
the 96 National League Championship Series Game 5 and extending through games 1 and 2 in the 2000 and the 2002 LCS. Cardinals have played five best-of-seven format playoff games at home and never had a lead until now. We talk about how potent this offense is. And in this <laughs> inning, with the offense, you know, with the runs that have scored, have gotten one ball hit out of the infield. another shaky outing out of that Houston pen whether they're getting through the infield or not he gave it up in game four he allowed the base hit to Roland which brought in the tying run in the fifth inning he's given up two of his own here in the sixth and that is one huge advantage the Cardinals have in this series their bullpen when it goes throw to second Still a great jump by Tony Womack and still get it going when he has to. Now one courtesy pickoff throw over to first base by Qualls, which Tony Womack certainly was anticipating in this situation and got a great jump. One hopper in the hole, this kind of will throw, and it gets away from Bagwell, and Womack will score. That's the ball that vizcaino has got a stick in his pocket. Well, Vizcaino has to stick it in his pocket in the first place, but if he does throw it, Jeff Bagwell needs to make sure this ball does not get by. With Larry Walker's speed, you know he's going to beat that out of first base. You have to make sure to keep that ball in front and not allow Tony Womack to come around and score. Even if he picks that ball clean, Larry Walker's safe at first base. Another ball not even hit out of the infield. But you're right, Bob. Bagwell has to almost become a catcher in that situation and block the ball and make sure it doesn't get by you. Tony Womack easily scoring once it gets past Bagwell at first. That'll be a single no RBI. A throwing error by Vizcaino allows Womack to score and the Cardinals lead by three. But this is where the home field advantage here in St. Louis comes into play for the Cardinals. They start a rally. They get a couple guys on base. Some things start happening. The crowd gets into it, and that ball just keeps rolling down the hill. And they're nice. <laughs> It's your worst nightmare as a pitcher to feel like maybe you're making some pitches. You're breaking bats. You're sawing guys off. No one's hitting the ball that hard against you. And yet they're scoring runs right and left. And then pool holes to the, to the plate. Breaking ball inside, 2-0. Oh, and five pools, 2-0. Gallo, the left-hander ready, joined again by Harville, who was up a couple of innings ago. Got it. Houston Penn. You think Qualls is thinking to himself right now, do I have to throw the ball? <laughs> well, he could just keep trying to pick Walker off first base for a half an hour <laughs> or so. surprised to have it. He's green-lighted right here. If he sees something he likes, he'll air it out. Amen. And steady takes outside ball four, and the inning continues. The eighth man to bat in the Cardinals' six will be Scott Rowland, and that's all for Qualls. 
He gives up three so far and trails by three. The ball off that cap in Los Angeles stayed in the game and had a double left a half inning later. Steve, you brought up earlier, missed 16 games thereafter. Roland did not have a hit in the entire division series in four games against the Dodgers. Hitless in his first two at bats tonight and then single to drive in a tying runoff Qualls in the fifth. He'll bat against Chad Harville, who came over from Oakland very early in the season. Harville throws a 95 mile an hour two seam fastball, a slider, and a curve. Cardinals have scored three times on four base hits on air and a walk to take a three run lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Cardinals have been doing that all year long. Hitting with runners in scoring position, especially that guy. Breaking ball swung on and fouled off. We welcome many of you just turning over from the presidential debate. Debate tonight in uh, Tempe, Arizona. We welcome you to St. Louis, Missouri. Alongside Bob Brindley, Steve Lyons, Chris Myers. And our entire Fox crew, I'm Tom Brenneman. Game one of his National League Championship Series. Astros have had a 2-0 lead and a 4-2 lead. Lost them both. Cardinals now in front 7-4. As they scored three times here in the bottom of the sixth inning. For those of you looking for the Boston Yankee game, and you're watching us on your Fox affiliate, turn over to your local FSN regional network. If you're watching us on Fox Sports Net, you can catch Boston and New York on your local Fox affiliate. Fastball. Did he go? No on the appeal. Three and one to Roller. Well, we've been saying all night that Scott Rowland had to prove to the Astros that he can hit going through the recent struggles that he's had. But watching this at bat right now after the single to left, Bob, I think you can officially stop pitching around pool holes to get to Roland because he looks locked in right now. He's laid off some borderline pitches. Worked the count in his favor. Very dangerous count here. And he lays off the breaking ball to load him up for Edmund. During the division series, the Astros' bullpen had an earned run average of nearly six. And the only reason it was 5.71 is because of Brad Lidge. Everybody else had ERA. The rest of the group is up over 10. Strike one to Edmonds, who can't believe the call. Edmonds has struggled recently, too, and a lot of people are talking about his hand placement. Watch where, how far his hands are away from his body. He normally has his hands a lot closer to his left shoulder. When he gets his hands out there, he sometimes casts his swing out around the ball instead of a direct path to it. One and one on Edmonds, the ninth man to bat in the Cardinals' sixth inning, and the bases are loaded. Walker, the runner at third, Pools at second, rolling on at first. Cardinals trying to break this one wide open. And do. One run score. Here comes Pools. They're waving around, rolling. Throw to the plate.
supposed to be up in the zone. Edmonds is an outstanding high ball hitter. He went down to get that one. He knows this is a double in the corner as soon as he hits it. But you talk about picture perfect swing. It's a 95 mile an hour fastball that doesn't get to the location. Look at the balance. Boy, that is pretty. Look at where he is looking down at the ball all the way back. Well, we were talking about a moment ago. Uh, Phil Garner had his left-hander, Mike Gallo, ready two or three different times in this game already. And elected to stay with a right-hander, Harville, against Edmonds. A 6-1 Cardinal sixth inning. Let's look at Diamond Cam, that play at the plate. You see Osmus holding his ground, trying to block the plate, rolling with a wide slide, reaching back with the left hand. Nothing there for Osmus to tag. How about rolling with the bad leg, scoring all the way from first? I think he's back. It's amazing what a hit will do for your <laughs> healing process, huh? Cap feels a lot better now. at second, still two out in the inning. Fastball on the outside, corner called strike. This inning began with a single by Renteria, an infield hit by Sanders, a sacrifice by Matheny. Cedeno knocked in a run on a broken back ground out. There was one on, one in, two out. Since in, single by Womack, a throwing error brought in the second run of the inning. Infield hit by Walker. There's strike two to Renteria. A walk to Pujols, a walk to Rowan, a three-run double by Edmonds. And this game's far from over because the offense of the Houston Astros can do exactly the same thing that St. Louis has done in this end. Yep. Two-two to Renteria. Bouncing ball and another broken bat. Kent's got it. And mercifully, this inning ends for the Houston Astros. Jim Edmonds caps off a six-run Cardinals six inning with a three-run double. And now a tall mountain to climb for Houston. But still, nine outs to play with. And they'll go against a Cardinal bullpen. Kiko Calero, a solid regular season for St. Louis. For the top bullpen in the National League this season. Morgan Innsberg, the batter, looks to the strike. Fernando La Russa said that Kiko Calero has kind of been the unsung hero of that Cardinals bullpen. A lot of the other guys get much more recognition, but he's equally effective against righties and lefties. He can pitch him for multiple innings. Just for example, left-handers hitting 175, right-handers 177. This is a guy you don't have to play situational baseball with when he's on the mound. One and one, Ensberg. Check swing, did he go? Yes. Says Eric Cooper, the first base umpire. I don't think it would matter if he could pitch or not. I think it would just be cool to hang out and tell people your name was Kiko Calera. <laughs> One and two to count on Ensberg, who's over two in the game. Sharply hit, but right at Womack. One away. Let's send it downstairs to Chris Myers, who's standing by with Woody Williams. 
All right, uh, thanks. Uh, with uh, Woody, who stands to be the winning pitcher, uh, first, before we talk about your performance, your reaction to that six-run inning, a tremendous outburst by your offense. Oh, it's been incredible. The, the guys have done that all season. It's, uh, you know, our job as starting pitchers is just to keep the ball in the ballpark, which I did not do tonight, but mainly just to keep the score close. And, uh, there's, you know, it happens all the time with our lineup. But uh, on the other side, they're capable of doing the same thing. All right, so you go six innings, 95 pitches. And uh, from Houston, Texas, uh, you had numerous relatives here. Your thoughts on the pitching in a game like like this uh, with the hometown watching. It was a lot of fun pitching uh, against my hometown team and, and a lot of support at home and here. So it's nice to, to have a big family. All right, thanks for your time and uh, good luck. Thank you. Right, thanks, Woody. Right. Great work by Chris Myers. And we thank Woody Williams. Yeah, Woody, Woody wanted Chris to ask him about his double. Pitchers, <laughs> pitchers always want to talk yeah. about their hitting. <laughs> and that was a big base hit. Sure was. Huge. For those of you that were not with us, Houston had taken a 4-2 to two lead. And in the bottom of the fifth inning, with one out in the inning, Williams doubled to right field. It allowed Larry Walker to come to the plate two batters later, who knocked him in with a double. And then one hitter after that, Roland got his first hit of the postseason to tie the game. You know, Woody Williams has said, too, that with all of his family down in Houston and the fact that he plays up here in St. Louis, he says most of his family are still Astros fans. They don't care. Off the glove of Calero, Renteria throws, but not going to get Vizcaino. That'll be a base hit, the second and three at bats for Jose Vizcaino. Well, with the pitcher spot on deck, Bill Garner will have to get some activity down in that bullpen in the event the Astros have something going here. I'm sure they would prefer for Chad Harville not to hit in this situation, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. At this point in the game, they're going to have to take every opportunity to get a bat in that lineup if they have any outright chance to score at all. Swing and a miss by Brad Austin. year he made the team as a non roster invitee out of spring training and became one of the team's most dependable relievers before undergoing season ending knee surgery in late June. They appeal and again rung up by Eric Cooper one and two on Austin. Valero originally a 27th round draft pick back in June of 96 by Kansas City traded to the Phillies returned to the Royals in 2002 and signed by the Redbirds two years ago. And Bob you know all about those non roster invitees and what they can do for a team. How about what Miguel Batista did for your club in 01 and 02 in Arizona. Absolutely a great move by Joe Gargiola Junior to sign Miguel Batista bring him in with the Diamondbacks and uh, Certainly was our most versatile pitcher. We used him in the rotation. We used him in long relief. We used him as a setup guy. Austin has gone looking. Two away in the inning. Right, Austin has got abused in that at bat. He just saw filthy pitch after filthy pitch. Watch this. Fastball outside corner. Go sit down. Now that's after throwing a couple of sliders out there just off of the outside corner. Get some check swings, some half swings. Orlando Palmero going to be announced as a pinch hitter. He was the best pinch hitter for the St. Louis Cardinals last year. Did a good solid job off the bench. Houston got him in the offseason. And he will bat for Harville. Who goes one third of an inning. Allows one hit one walk one run. Dan Wheeler. Will come on in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ball down and in 
into Palmero. As Craig Biggio stands in the on-deck circle, he is, there's only one guy actively playing in the big leagues right now that has more games played that has never appeared in a World Series game. His name's Palmero too, but not the kid that's hitting right now, Rafael Palmero. He's the only guy in the big leagues that has played in more games than Craig Biggio and not played in a World Series. And if you're wondering, very early in Orlando Palmero's career, some said he was a distant cousin of Rafael Palmero, and Orlando says, that's news to me. <laughs> in fact, Palmero, 2,721 games without playing in a World Series. Look at some of the great names on that list. Andre Dawson, Ernie Banks, Billy Williams, both, of course, with the Cubs. Hall of Famers, Rod Carew, Luke Applin, and then Biggio. Been a long time for Bagwell. Get a look at Andy Pettit, the former New York Yankee, out for the year. Pulled into right field. That is a fair ball into the corner. Vizcaino on his way to third. Larry Walker scoops it up, hits a cutoff man. They'll hold Vizcaino. Said it a little while ago, do not count this Houston team out quite yet. Well, because of Calero's control, they are able to overshift a little bit in the Cardinals outfield. They were playing Palmero to hit the ball to the opposite field. Calero made a rare mistake on the inner half of the plate. He was able to hook it down into that right field corner for a double. And, but look how quickly Larry Walker gets down there. Look at the ground he's covering, because this could easily score a run. Plays the carom perfectly, gets the relay throw in perfectly. And because... Tony Womack handled the ball so much more quickly on that play, he could not send the runner and score it. Well, the Astros one swing of the bat away from being right back in it. And Abigio finds a way to reach. They're really one swing of the bat away from being back in it. Because Beltron stands on deck. Generous strike zone on that call. That's a tough pitch to hit right there. Oh, yeah. Below the knees and off the corner, that's tough to hit. <laughs> a visio, though, the professionalism that he shows. Stands up there, doesn't say a word. They got another shot at you. Off the end of the bat, foul and out of play. And Calero ahead of Vigio and one ball to two strikes. Franchise leader in games played, hits, runs, doubles. And the only reason he doesn't lead everything else in the rest of them is because Bagwell has all the power numbers. Welcome out to end the inning. They stand and stretch in St. Louis. Cardinals had a six-run, six-inning and lead in game one of his National League Championship Series. 10-4, the gentlemen, singing of God Bless America, Hall of Famer, Cardinals former Cardinal and Red Cowboy and tight end, Hall Jackie Famer, Smith with the honors. Former football Cardinals great, Jackie Smith will sing God Bless America. God bless America, land the
championship series on Fox is brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. By the makers of St. Joseph Aspirin, America's original for the heart. And by UPS, what can Brown do for you? Sellout crowd, 52,323 for a game one of his National League Championship Series for the St. Louis Cardinals. The best record in the National League. 105 wins against only 57 losses. Have come from behind twice. Behind 2-0 and 4-2. They tied it with a pair in the fifth. Had a six-run six. And now Dan Wheeler on from a Houston bullpen. It has not been a good night for the Houston bullpen in game one. Foul ball. And as a manager, when you go to your bullpen, whether it's a close game or a blowout game, you'd like to bring those guys in there, let them have a little bit of success so that if you need them again later in the series, well, they've got a positive experience to build. But uh, with, the, with the appearances tonight, uh, Bill Garner's got to be scratching his head when that situation comes up again, and he needs to make that call to the bullpen. They've had a hard time getting the ball to anybody that they can truly depend on to get to their outstanding closer, Brad Lidge. Of course, the bullpen used to be the number one strength of this Astro team just a year ago. Not now. They have struggled. Two and one to Sanders. Swing and a miss, two balls, two strikes. Sanders had an infield hit, scored a run in that six run, six inning. One of three tonight. Somebody's hungry. <laughs> Two two struck him out. Well, guys, what would you what would you sacrifice to get a foul ball in this stadium? Check out the guy in the bucket hat. <laughs> ben Edmonds goes in there and gets it. Hits the girl in the face as he raises the ball and then does the all these shuffle on top of the kid. <laughs> but he did help him up. Eventually, but I mean, you would have thought that was, you know, Barry Bonds' 756th homer. Oh, no, don't bring that up. We might have a lawsuit in the Bay Area just talking about it here in St. Louis. No, not in this town, because they give the ball back. Of course, one of the great stories from this summer when Ken Griffey Jr. hit his 500th career home run in this ballpark. A young Cardinal fan, young man caught the ball, gave it to Griffey. Griffey handed over jerseys, bats, balls, helmets, whatever the young man wanted. And then three before the All-Star game, Griffey called the young man on the phone, bought him and three of his friends and family members tickets to the All-Star game in Houston, Texas. He said, thank you again. You remember when Mark McGuire was hitting all of his home runs and the, his 62nd home run just cleared the left field wall, one of the grounds crew kids. And I wish I remembered the kid, his name. Just a great guy. Brought the ball back. Himself, his brother, his mother, all work at the stadium. He's now in law school. <laughs> Just, I mean, you're talking about this town. They're, they're, there's no lawsuits. They're not selling anything. They're giving the ball back to whoever hit it. Amazing. That's the Midwest. That's the Midwest. which led to one run and helped tack on five more in that sixth inning. Here's tonight's game summary brought to you by Nissan. A tight one, a good one. 
at the end of five, a 4-4 game. Brandon back, he threw the ball pretty well here tonight, but he was taken down. One out away from qualifying for a victory. Jack Falls came in, allowed the tying run to be driven in by Scott Rowan, his first hit in this postseason. Ten men batted, six of them scored in the Cardinals' sixth inning, and Marlon Anderson, the pinch hitter, for Kiko Calera. Strike one. You're talking about getting a guy in to have a little success. Wheeler's dealing right now. And on the other side of the field, Calero came in, had a clean inning, did give up the one base hit to Jose Vizcaino, but a successful outing for him. On the ground is short, getting over. A one, two, three, seven, four wheeler for the Astros with the heart of the order coming up. Down six. Bottom of the eighth inning, Houston coming to bat, trailing 10-4 in game one of his National League Championship Series. And now on the pitch for St. Louis, who looks so good in that Division Series game two against the Dodgers. Went two innings, allowed one hit, struck out three. Danny Heron. Pitching out of the bullpen in the major leagues, a starter in the minor leagues, looks like a future starter. Boy, is this guy scalding pitches with regularity could easily have a pair of home runs in a game tonight he has one and now two hits turns around a 93 mile an hour fastball on the inside part of the plate lightning quick with that bat we're just squaring everything up right now no wasted movement in his swing he keeps the bat head through the hitting zone for a long time even though as you talked about Bob his, his swing is so quick Now Jeff Bagwell, first pitch swinging, fouls it back to the screen. Bagwell, 0 for 2, drew a walk back in the fourth inning. There's a few people in the Cardinal organization that were making some noises as if Heron may get a start Yep, in this series. Hard sinker, slider, split finger. He says, coming out of the pen, I only use three pitches. I have a decent curveball. Don't use it very much unless I'm a starter. Aaron, only 24 years old. In fact, just turned 24 less than a month ago. And he strikes out Bagwell on three straight pitches. Textbook up the ladder on Jeff Bagwell, gets him to the two-strike count, elevates that fastball up around the shoulders. Looks so good, but so tough to catch up to. Coming out to make the change, Tony La Russa will bring in Ray King in a six-run ball game here in the eighth. Left-hander Ray King in the game for the St. Louis Cardinals. I saw something the other night in the game in L.A. that I don't think I've ever seen before. Ray King came in to face Steve Finley in the top of the eighth inning. Could not see the signs. You see him step off the rubber, let Mike Matheny know. Matheny goes over and taps the back of his fingers in the chalk to give Ray King a better view of those fingers as he hung the signs. Look at this. I've never seen that before. I've seen catchers put tape on their fingers. I've seen them put white out on their fingernails, but I've never seen a guy on the spur of the moment tap the back of his fingers in the chalk like that to give his pitcher a better look. Yeah, Matheny's a man's man. He didn't want to be wearing any nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> Lance Berkman, the batter. First pitch swinging, fouls Ooh. out of play. I love King's philosophy of pitching. He says, you get three pitches. After three pitches, you're either going to be back in the dugout or on first base, which basically says, I'm going to come after you. Let's go. High fly ball, pretty well hit into left field, and it will fly into the stands. Home run off the bat of Lance Berkman. And now the Astros within slam range with only one out here in the eighth inning. Berkman is third postseason home run. 
Well, he aired out that first swing like he was trying to go deep, and then he got a pitch to do it on again, and he only took two pitches before he got into the dugout, back to the dugout. <laughs> wow. Now Jeff Kent about it. 10-6 ball game. Kent first pitch swinging fouls it out of play. You got to wonder, Steve, based on that philosophy you just talked about from Ray King, whether or not some of those Astros hitters are pretty aware of that. The fact that he doesn't fool around, comes after people because the first two batters in this inning against King, first pitch swinging. Especially this late in the game with that lead, you figure, hey, he's going to come right after us. We still have to be aggressive if we want to get back in this game. Julian Tamar is getting ready in the Cardinal bullpen. Kemp pops it up and playable. Right side of the infield for Albert Pools. Well, he had a battle out. Two away. We remind you this Sunday, J.B. Terry Howie and Jimmy hit the road and set up shot to broadcast America's number one pregame show from Foxborough, home of the Patriots. Jimmy counts down his 10 greatest teams of all time. Ty Law and Tom Brady go 10 yards with TV. Sunday noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on Fox. So Julian Tavares will be called on from the pen. We'll be back. Astros have gotten a two-run home run here in the eighth inning from Lance Berkman. And the Cardinals lead by four. With nobody on it, two men out. Morgan Ensberg, the batter against the new Cardinal pitcher. Well, what a year he's had. Julian Tavares. Mike Matheny says Tavares has about eight pitches. <laughs> <laughs> different arm angles, different <laughs> grips on the ball. Broken bat liner to third on the first pitch he throws, and that'll end the inning. Larry Walker coming up, a home run away from hitting for the cycle. The League Championship Series on Fox is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge by DirecTV, DirecTV Sports' biggest fans. And by Coors Light, the coldest tasting beer in the world. Our entire Fox crew. Pleased to have you with us from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Game one of his National League Championship Series. The Cardinals with a 4-1 lead. And a soft liner to the new shortstop. The Astros' everyday shortstop during the regular season. Adam Everett, he takes over. And Jose Vizcaino moves from short over to second. Jeff Kent out of the game. Of course, we saw Jeff Kent foul that ball off his foot. I'm sure there's a considerable amount of swelling in that ankle and taking the opportunity to get him in that training room and get some treatment. Well, a little bit of drama here. Never in the history of postseason play has a player hit for the cycle. And Larry Walker has a chance to do that right here and right now. The last Cardinal to do it, John Mabry, all the way back in 1996. That was the one to do it on. <laughs> You're right about that. Kind of got fooled by the location of that pitch. He was a little tardy on a ball that tailed right back out over the plate. Walker hit two home runs in game one of the division series. Swing and a foul ball back out of play. Well, Larry Walker in the first inning in a line drive that Bergman must have lost in the lights. It turned into a triple. His third time up, Walker, a broken bat, double the drive in a run down the third baseline. And then in the six-run, six inning, an infield single. Swing and a miss, and he's gone. So unless we go to extra innings, that record will stand. Walker's hockey mentality came out yesterday in the press conference when they asked him if this is the best team he ever played on. He said, well, I was on that 94 Expo team. It was pretty good, and the Blake Street Bombers were pretty good, but I'd be stupid to say that this isn't the best team we're playing on. I'm in the playoffs, and this town is so much fun. The fans are so great, and it's a great organization. 
Like a true hockey player. Under the glove of Everett into the center field. Pools with his second hit, fourth time he's been on base tonight. It's October and Major League Baseball's postseason is coming down to the wire. Every game, every inning, every play counts. Watch the World Series on Fox starting October 23rd. Don't miss it. Roger Clemens will get the ball in game three. Talked about Andy Pettit, loss for the year, as was their outstanding right-hander, Wade Miller. I mean, just on that alone, it's hard to believe that Houston is here. Two lethal weapons in that starting rotation when the season began. And that's what happens to your bullpen when you have guys that were in the pen, you lose starters, you move two from the bullpen into your rotation, holes will be created. Not only that, but then to plug the holes in the bullpen, you call up guys from the minor leagues who have probably been starters in the minor leagues. Throw them into a role that they're not familiar with, and it takes a while for everybody to settle in and figure out exactly what it is is expected of them. And if your starters can't get out of the fifth, then that puts guys in different roles than they're used to, even if they have been pitching up here. Oh, and two to Roland, who picked a fine time to get his first hit of this postseason. A two-out game-tying single in the fifth inning. One and two to count. Roland grew up a Cardinal fan. Talked about growing up in Indiana. His family used to make the drive here and sit in the upper deck at Bush Shady. Foul tipped into the mid of Osmus, and we go to the ninth inning. The Astros down four in game one. Houston comes to bat top half of the ninth inning, down four. 10-6 game, Julian Tavares on the mound. He got the final out in the eighth inning, and it's strike one to Vizcaino. On the ground to Tony Womack. We look ahead to game two tomorrow. Talked about St. Louis able to set up its rotation for this LCS. Not the case for Houston. Pete Monroe gets the ball tomorrow night against Matt Morris. Monroe has not pitched in a game since the 1st of October. And in that game, it was his shortest start of the season. Two and two-thirds innings against Colorado. Morris got the loss, going seven innings, allowing four runs. When he got locked up with Jose Lima, game three in Los Angeles during the division series. He went around all two. Can you imagine being from out of town and showing up in this city on game night and deciding to go down to the local store and say, I think I might need to buy a red sweatshirt? Sorry, we're all out. <laughs> the sea of red in this place. It's amazing. And it's the same way for a ball game in April or May. It doesn't have to be the postseason. That's just the way the fans are here in St. Louis. Ball swinging Osmus and Houston down to its final out tonight. The producer of tonight's game is Jeff Gowan, our director Jim Lynch, our tape producer Carol Langley, our associate director Eric Billigmeyer, our broadcast associate Zach Fields, technical producer Dan Rotante, our technical director Jeff Butler, audio mixer Jeff Cohen. Studio produced by Gary Lang, directed by Bob Levy, associate director Stephanie Medina. Strike one in there to Mike Land, the pinch hitter. Coordinating producer of our studio show, Scott Ackerson. Technical supervisor, Jack Simmons. The senior producer at Fox Sports is Bill Brown. And the executive producers are David Hill and Ed Gorin. One and one to land. He 
got a good look at the new dirty hat of Julian Tavares out there. One of those hats got him in trouble earlier in the game, got kicked out of a ball game. So it was determined that he had a foreign substance on the hat. You think managers don't think differently in the postseason? He's got a four-run lead with two outs in the ninth inning and has his closer, Jason Isringhausen, <laughs> tossing just in case something gets going here. Well, you can certainly understand that. Absolutely. That ball hammered into deep left center field, and Lamb will touch them all. All seven Astros runs in the game tonight have come via the long ball. Two-run home runs from Beltron, Kent, Berkman, solo homer by Lamb. And it's a three-run ball game, and that's why Tony La Russa has Isringhausen getting loose. <laughs> yeah, this is not his first time down this dark alley. He knows what to expect. He knows in the postseason things can happen quickly. He's not even going to let Dave Duncan go to the phone. He's going to check on himself. Boy, Lamb gets a ball down and out over the plate. Real good extension, good carry. Well, this will be the final batter, undoubtedly, that Tavares is going to face either way. You talk about managing differently in the playoffs. There's no question that happens early into the second round of the playoffs. Four closers have already had their longest appearance of the entire season in this postseason. Lidge, Nathan, Smoltz, Rivera. You're going to run your best guy out there. Down the left field line, and it sails over the head of Reggie Sanders. Bounces over the wall. Ground rule double by Biggio. And now the real teeth of this Houston batting order is coming up. Beltron next. Bagwell would follow. His Ringhausen is ready, and you got to believe LaRouche is coming to get Tavares here. Now this, this game should be over, Tommy. That ball was badly misplayed by Reggie Sanders out there. He took about five steps in on the ball, was fooled as to how hard that ball was hit by Biggio, and the ball sailed right over his head. Well, it's Dave Duncan and not Tony La Russa. There you see where Sanders has taken the U-turn to go chase it. Call is made to the pen. Beltron, then Bagwell. Houston down three. Astros still alive here in the top of the ninth inning. They get a pinch hit home run from Mike Lamb. A double by Craig Biggio. Tony La Russa with a 10-7 lead. A man on and two out here in the ninth inning. Summons his closer, Jay. 47 to 54 and save chances on the year. He faces Carlos Beltran, who has two hits, including a home run tonight. First pitch swinging, and this ought to do it. Game one belongs to St. Louis. As has been the case so frequently this year, just simply too much Cardinals thunder in that lineup. Ten runs, 12 base hits. Williams a winner, Qualls a loser, Isringhouse in the save. It's a bad combination when you look at the Cardinals offense against a struggling bullpen of the Houston Astros. They have no weapons to hold that offense down. Ten runs in today's game. And a couple walks in the ball game hurt the Astros staff as well. Pujol scored on a walk after a walk. Roland scored after a walk. And a couple of the other walks extended innings to get other hitters up there. It did some damage. Let's send it downstairs and join Chris Myers. All right. Thanks very much, actually. Uh, Larry just coming off the field, shaking hands with the uh, coaching staff. Uh, congratulations, Larry, on uh, on taking game one. There's uh, Tony La Russa. Three hits uh, for you. Talk about how important it is to take game one of a series like this. Well, it's, it's why we got home field advantage. You hope to get out to a quick start. And, uh, 
You know, obviously, we're happy being 1 0 right now, and just uh, come in tomorrow and hopefully uh, win another one. Single, a double, and a triple. You know, no player in postseason history had ever hit for the uh, for the cycle. You had a chance the last time. All you needed was uh, was a home run. Were you thinking about that at all? That's all I needed, just a home run. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, I think you could tell by my swings. I was I was hacking at it pretty good. I had a hang, hang slider to hit, but uh, missed it. But right. it's way. Quick thought on uh, obviously game two, Pete Monroe, Matt Morris. Uh, well, Matty has been consistent his whole career. You know, hopefully he'll come out and good pitch well. I don't know a lot about Pete Monroe. We're going to probably go over him and definitely tomorrow and, and, and see what he has to feature. All right, thanks for your time. Good luck. Thanks, Chris. All right, Larry, take care. Tom? Chris, great to have you with us tonight. A job well done. The St. Louis Cardinals trying to get to the World Series for the first time since 1987, bringing in the highest scoring team in the National League this season, and they lived up to the billing. 10-7 winners in game one of this National League Championship Series. For those of you watching on FSN, coming up next, a special edition of the Best Damn Sports Show, period. For those of you on the Fox Network, Jeannie and Kevin are coming up right after these messages. We will look forward to seeing you here tomorrow night. We get underway at East Eastern, 5 Pacific, 7 o'clock Central Time. Game two of the National League Championship Series. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow.